morning everybody it's june 29th 2023 it's about seven in the morning and it is hotter than a june bride riding bareback on a wood burning stove of course in the deep south we're used to those sorts of things and uh, that's just a common thing this time of year but we're going to be looking at the history of gardening this morning and we're going to be looking at some peas that are going to be coming off pretty soon out here on the farm uh, gardening goes way back you know you look at uh, down there in Pensacola Garden Street when the old colonists had their homes their gardens all butted up to the back this back street that run through town and hence they called it Garden Street World War One World War Two we had victory gardens where people would get out and grow stuff so that the commercial agricult agriculture could go to the war effort but even before then in the war between the states a revolution Southerners in particular have always been self-reliant, growing their own food, canning, preserving stuff for hard times, making do out of things. Uh, the peas we're going to look at this morning, southern cow peas as they're called, used to be feed for livestock until somebody figured out, probably through desperate times, that they actually tasted pretty good. So they started raising them and then that's how all of that come to be. So let's turn around, take a look. You know, people think you're being friendly in the South when you're waving, but really you're just trying to wave off a gnat or a bug. So let's see what we got going on. We've got some corn there being dried. Just gonna let it air dry on the stalk. Gonna make, try to have it ground into grits and cornmeal. Been a decent year for this kind of corn. Now, my sweet corn didn't make. We got zapped by that cold spell. And uh, that kind of made it a little bit hard, but uh, We'll wade through the grass and we'll get that, that get the corn off of there and get it to the gentleman that's going to grind it for us. And, and once again, that's an old southern tradition too. Of course, it's hard these days to find folks that do that sort of stuff. But we, we persevere and do so. So let's take a look at those peas. Now these right here are pink eye purple hull peas. They're the BVR variety. They're an heirloom. This is the kind your grandparents would have planted. And BVR stands for bacteria virus resistance. And they are they were considered to be a step above some of the other stuff. My neighbor, who passed some years ago, JD Page, told me to plant blue goose peas. I'd never be disappointed. And I bought some, just couldn't do much with them, but I think a lot of it had to do with just our changing climate and soil conditions and I think you got to be able to get enough to really do anything but these peas are probably going to come off in about a week this big crop they got plenty of blooms coming in them I'm going to sell them for $35 a bushel shelled $26 a bushel unshelled and if, if folks are brave enough to pick them um, pick their own because that's a hard thing to find these days uh, we'll sell them to them for um, $10 per five-gallon bucket. And that's quite a deal. And if folks want to pick on halves, I really like that because the more you pick on halves, the less I have to pick. And at 52 years old as of today, I got to start working smarter instead of harder. So here we go. But some things that are interesting about, about peas, if you're watching this and you're not familiar with growing this variety is that you plant them and what you want to do peas don't like a lot of nitrogen so what you want to do is you want to put down some kind of fertilizer like 412 12 or triple 10 or something along those lines and you want to make sure you got plenty of space between your rows so you can get in there and cultivate it if you got a tiller and you got a spot small enough that you can get in there and till it and that's even better but once they get to get up and get to going you'll get these blooms on them and uh, that's where that's how you know you're fixing to start getting peas and see these blooms make your peas and you need to get them off because it'll you get the peas off when they start coming in because eventually they'll turn purple hence purple hull peas and they will uh you know that'll stop the vine from producing and then they'll go to seed now this kind of plant this kind of variety of peas we're going to save these seeds off of at least one row to try to reseed next year to plant next year now in the old days people used a variety of fertilizers you know they used cow manure or different things um, then you 
had the advancement that came up in the way of sodi and my dad used to talk about going through and they'd dad would have him go through and they'd put sodi out for fertilizer and then the chemical fertilizers came into use like triple 13 4 12 12 8 24 24 and all of that and that was a revolution in farming now all these organic farmers i get it about you know not using a lot of chemicals and pesticides and all that but if you farm in the deep south we got bugs that nobody else has you know and we also got a, a lot of bugs that people do have like stink bugs and stuff like that chemical fertilizer made a big difference in the ability of farmers to grow crops to feed billions of people around the world and if we get rid of all of that and like they're trying to do in the netherlands and like they tried to do in sri lanka i'm afraid we're going to have famine on a massive scale self-induced famine it's going to lead to more government control I'm not trying to get on the soapbox this is more like history of gardening here but it's just things you have to consider you have to strike a balance with nature but I enjoy gardening and doing doing crops like this. It's kind of therapy. And, uh, this is the first year I've had a garden since my parents passed. And um, it's done me a lot of good to, to get out and do this. Uh, but these crops are, we got big plants here. These, these here were planted a little later. They haven't started blooming yet, but you can look here and see it won't be long. Another big thing about peas and such as this, you got to keep the grass and weeds out of it. Morning glory and stuff like that, they'll get in here and choke out these peas and they'll just ruin them. So you got to, you really got to stay on your game, um, which is even harder now that it's, it's so incredibly hot right now. Heat index is probably going to be 110 today and, and it's uh, not even 8 o'clock yet. And, you know, I'm already uh, pretty much sweated through my clothes and, and you know, I mean, it's just it's just incredibly hot. So, but you have to, but you have to stay on top of it. Get out there and work early. When these peas start coming in, I'll probably get out there and pick them about five in the morning till about ten, and then and then run the sheller and sell them. And that's the way that's the way folks have done it for a lot of years. People have made a living off of small plots of land like this, and it, it can be done. And it's something that you can take a lot of pride in working with it. And it's just something to keep up with. But I thought it was kind of important to show the background of gardening and, and such because a lot of times when you go out and plant stuff and you just know what you've done for years and years that your family's planted and you've just done it the same way as your dad and your granddad, but you don't ever ask how did that start? Where did that come from? These over here are the zipper creams and there's also some crowders in this batch. So just remember when you're out there sweating in the garden, there's a lot of history all around you from the way these things began. You know, peas, they not only went from the old blue goose to the BVRs, pink eye purple hull, to now you got Mississippi purple hull. You have top pick, which if you got a machine to pick them, you can go through there with something like top pick. You don't want to go through these BVRs with a, with a, um, machine you'll just clog it up downside to a machine is that it don't, you're only going to get one shot at it it's going to go through and take everything and that's going to pretty much be it and those machines are real expensive i would really like to have one but uh i think that's a little bit i think that might be a bridge too far but anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this little short walk through the garden and walk through a little gardening history and Thanks for watching and please like, share, and subscribe. And have a good day out there in the deep south.